Well, hello, I'm Chris, and this is my Holly Part 3 video. So in Part 1, I took this one apart and we looked at everything. Part 2, we put a kit in there, rebuilt this one. This one's ready to go. This carburetor is the one that's going on my 1970 Chevelle with a 454 in it. And in this video, we're going to compare these two because these are the most confused carburetors of all time. And so many people get tricked into buying this one who are really looking for this one. So this one's a 750 3310-2. We zoom in on the part number. So you see we got 3310 and dash one. So 3310 and 3310-1 are the same. This just indicates that it's an aftermarket replacement carburetor. So the date code on a three digit, the two is either 1962 or 72, the sixth month of the year, June, and the first week of June. So what discouraged me a long time ago with Holly's is I was looking up the correct carburetor for my 1970 Chevelle that has a 454 in it. And I would find these carburetors they would be listed as SS396, SS454, and they would have price ranges from $200 to $1,700. And I could not figure it out. I had no idea. So I just, you know, saved that for another day. And those days are now. And what I did find out is that Holly got with GM and they made this carburetor for the big blocks. So this is the, what you would call if it had a nickname, the SS396 big block carburetor so the ones like this that came from on factory cars had a gm part number on them like that and this number would be stamped above the list number and the date codes would make these the price of these carburetors fluctuate so the fact that this doesn't have the gm stamp number makes it an aftermarket carburetor and the date code is really irrelevant now on this date code if this two would be either a nine or a zero meaning either 69 or 70 this carburetor would probably be worth about five, six, seven, maybe even a thousand dollars if that date code added up correctly to like, let's say a 69 SS 396 Camaro. So the point of this video is that so many people get suckered into buying this carburetor because they'll have it listed as a 3310. And we're going to go over the difference and show you that they are completely different. And if you're trying to get the most performance out of an entry level carburetor, that you much rather want to start with one of these and we're going to explain why. So another thing I need to add is that the 3310-2s, they're all 750s. So one of the thing, important things about knowing what that dash means is they can be 3310-2 through 11. So 3310-2, 345 on to 11 are going to be this one. Okay, so they're both vacuum secondaries. This is a manual choke and this is a heat riser choke. Okay, so we got them on the throttle side. On the 4160 series, they're gonna have a primary metering block. And you look on the secondaries, there's no metering block. So that's what makes it a 4160. Now on this one, we got a primary metering block and now we have a secondary metering block, which makes this a 4150. So the main body set up the same height. But what makes these carburetors different is the main bodies are completely different. See, we look at the boosters and it's got straight leg boosters on it. And see, they have a little thing in the middle of the booster. Now we look at the 3310 and it has down leg boosters. See how they go down and they don't have anything in the middle of them. And that's one of the most important things you need to look at when you see them advertised because they'll have this as a 3310. But at first glance, you can just see the 3310 with the down leg boosters in it. And they actually say that how that's got those little centers in there that that is actually gonna increase the airflow. And if you look this one up, you'll find out it's a 780 CFM and this is a 750 CFM. Down leg boosters, 780 CFM, secondary metering block, completely different carburetors. So you can just tell right off the bat that the 3310 is a more performance oriented factory carburetor. This is a stock, just basic, daily driver carburetor and i'm going to go ahead and keep this one forever i like it too but you're just not going to get the performance that you're going to get out of this one so like in the other videos you need to print your carburetor out we're going to start to take it apart and just confirm that it has what it's supposed to have from the factory to start with when you're messing with carburetors you always get you a platform or put some legs on it like this do not ever please don't ever set your freaking holly on a table on this linkage right there 
So in this video, we're just gonna take apart and look at what's different than the 3310-2. Go check that video out where we take everything apart and look at it the best that we can. So first of all, this is time vacuum. They just had it plugged. That's all that is. So the fuel inlet bushing, got a 5 16 hole and they had some double gaskets going on here. Sight plug had more double gaskets. You don't wanna do that. Primary fuel bowl, just get it off with four screws. Okay, that's stuck. See, and that's why you gotta take all this stuff apart because see that gasket right there in the fuel bowl? This one doesn't have one on there. It doesn't have it on the bolt, so th was this carburetor leaking gas whenever the, the car would shake? Probably was. So yeah, this one's got sand and dirt in it. Let's see if he had the float initial adjustment. See, he didn't even have it adjusted. Why? See, that's why we take this stuff apart, man. He said this was came off a running car, which doesn't not look like it was running. Or if it was, it wasn't running very good. So let's see if the accelerator pump has any mysteries. This looks okay, the roll pin looks fine. So this looks good, it's got the spring in there. I'm gonna leave that alone because it, it looks like it was replaced. Okay, so this baffle's bent, so someone's been in here before. Bro, this thing's like super stuck. Ugh. God dang it. So that's gonna be fun getting these gaskets off. So he only had the idle mixture screws turned out about half a turn. So this car was probably running like that. Brrr. Inspect that, that looks perfect. Power valve. God dang it. So the power valve does not have any numbers. It has like some kind of weird dot on it. Which is weird because on the part sheet, it has some weird stuff on it too. Someone let me know what that means if you know. Okay, so whenever you have two metering blocks, you gotta call these the primary jets. Looking for them numbers, we got 72s, that's correct. Primary metering block, that's it. Okay, remember I was talking about checking that throttle link, it's very important, this one looks perfect. So now on to the secondary fuel bowl and metering block. So no, this one did have a float in it, I just had to take it out to use it in that rebuild video because that one was missing a flow. Okay, always inspect these screws, make sure they're not stripped. Got more double gaskets going on, don't do that. I swear I think they super glued this one on. Secondary metering block is stuck. I'm gonna have to take it outside to get it off. Talk about it in the rebuild, how I got it off, but we're looking at the Jets 76s for the secondary metering block and that's correct. Got a power valve in there. Can't look at it yet. So let's move on to this weird choke thing. It's some kind of heat riser tube that sucks in heat off the manifold. I've never seen one before like this. Let's just take it off. It's got a little clip in there. This comes off. Okay, I don't know anything about this. I'm not gonna run it, but I'll save it for somebody that's looking for one. So we're gonna get this choke off. Be careful, these screws like to strip, so if they're getting hard to take out, you need to stop and inspect them and see what's going on. So that was in there like that. Pull this up. Pull this out. So the vacuum secondary only has a primary discharge nozzle, no secondary discharge nozzle. We're gonna check and see if that needle valve's in there. So the discharge nozzle for the primaries, this looks all wrong. It's supposed to have like some kind of concave thing for that screw to set in. That's why you gotta take it apart. 25 thousandths is correct though, but this is wrong. See if the needle valve's in there, flip it over. Are you serious? There's no needle valve in this one. It'll have a seat in there so you can feel this go all the way down. Okay, so we're missing a needle valve. That's awesome. So let's take the vacuum diaphragm housing off and see what's going on in there. Take this clip off first. Okay, so we're checking for this little gasket right here. It, it could have been good, I don't know, but it's like not even existent anymore. We're taking this off, looking for the check ball and inspecting the diaphragm. Checking for the spring and check ball. Spring looks good. It's a different spring. This one feels squishier than the other one I took out. Check ball. No check ball. Missing. Now this diaphragm feels bad. This is like, feels deteriorated and, and shrunken. This one will have to be changed out. We're gonna change it out anyway, but this one is trash. 
So inspect the base plate. This one did have good pictures of the base plate on the ad. It looks perfect. Okay, so this one's got some different type of screws in there. I think these are the ones that you do not try to take out. They'll like strip everything. Base plate screws are all there. Looks good. Let's just take the base plate off to see what's going on. Okay, we got messed up screws, so this has been off before too. That screw was loose. That screw was like really tight. Okay, all the screws look good and washers are all there. Okay. All right, that looks fine. With the little air bleeds, just remember you need to clean these out real good. They feel like they're full of crud. Like they may have been stopped up. Okay, so this base plate looks like it was new or replaced. Hopefully it's, it's okay. Okay, so 172 were the same butterfly valves as the other one. So hopefully this is the correct base plate. I'm gonna be really mad if it's not. So I went to the Holly website and they pretty much had everything for sale for the same price as you can get them pretty much everywhere. So we got our new diaphragm. It looks completely different when it's new. And we were missing a float and a hanger. So you had to buy two of these. This was like $22. So for this rebuild, I bought this little kit for the diaphragm housing where you can change out the spring. Definitely put this on a carburetor that you're going to get into tuning with. Okay, I think this was like 20 something dollars. So you can buy this with the spring kit or not. Um, I'm gonna buy that stuff later, but we just wanna get this on the carburetor for sure. And you see what happened, we bought a used carburetor, it was $232. It was missing some stuff and it definitely has some problems. So you always take that risk buying a used carburetor. So in part four, we're gonna do a quick rebuild on this one using the new parts. And we're going to open up a trick kit and see exactly what it comes with. Now these trick kits can cost about $130 and it's a pretty heavy box. It comes with a bunch of stuff. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. And be careful buying a used carburetor.